But a warm welcome uh, to St Andrews. Uh, are you all well today? Yes. yes. Are you with me? Yes. yes. That's a brilliant. Excellent. Uh, and if this is your first time uh, back with us at St Andrews, you'll notice uh, that there have just been one or two minor changes uh, about the building. Um, so, um, so, yeah, so uh, just to mention, uh, if you need the toilets at any point, um, so about, we're not using the toilets at the back, uh, but if you go through the door uh, on my right, um, so about then uh, you can use the disabled loo, so we're just trying to cut down on cleaning. So uh, if you uh, need to use the loo, there it is. Um, do use the hand gel stations around the church and uh, obviously do keep your uh, distance from one another as much as possible. However, even though there have been some things that have changed, uh, there are a lot of things that you'd be glad to know that are still the same. So, we're still going to worship together. That's it. Uh, we might not be able to sing hymns, but we're going to worship uh, together this morning. We're going to hear God's word uh, and study God's word together, and uh, we're going to pray together. So it's just like normal church, isn't it, really? So there we are. Um, just to mention, um, afterwards, um, as it's sunny again, finally, after the rain that we had yesterday, uh, the Vicarage Garden will be open uh, after church. So if you do want to stay around and have a chat, uh, again, we'll be uh, sat at a distance from one another. Uh, but you are know, very welcome to come and share fellowship afterwards uh, in the garden, if you wish. So let's uh, relax, let's uh, worship together, and we're going to uh, use uh, this opening prayer on the screen. Um, and do join in with the words in bold yellow time. So, Lord, speak to us. That we may hear your words. Move among us. That we may behold your glory. Receive our prayers. That we may learn to trust you. Amen. Now, sadly, um, as you know, we can't sing uh, songs or hymns uh, this morning, but we can still speak our praises to God. And um, as we're looking at the Psalms uh, at the moment in our series, uh, it seems fitting that actually we could use a, a psalm of praise to lead us uh, in worship uh, this morning. So I'm going to invite you all to stand and uh, we're going to praise God by saying uh, these words of Psalm 103 uh, together. So let's praise God and thank him for who he is and all that he's done in our lives uh, by saying these words together. So praise, praise the Lord my soul, all my inmost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins, and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things, so that your youth is renewed like an eagle. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He has known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbour his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve, or repair us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Oh man, do take a seat. And of course, as we remember that God forgives us uh, and sets us free by his mercy and his grace, uh, we come now to a time of confession. And let's offer to God uh, those things this, more, this week uh, that we've done wrong, those things that we know have upset God. Uh, and let's uh, use this space this morning to confess them um, and seek God's forgiveness this morning. So let's just have a moment of quiet as we reflect on those things which we need to offer to God. Uh, this morning.
And so as we confess our sins, let's use this prayer honestly. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy upon us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sins. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so may the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, uh, to introduce our theme uh, for this morning, uh, we're going to play a game. Uh, and you might guess what game we're going to play. We're going to play Snakes and Ladders, okay? So, uh, what I need, uh, we're going to split the congregation up. So, uh, you are one side, uh, and you are the other. Don't worry, I know it's a bit uh, sort of like uneven in terms of numbers, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, and what I need is, I need a volunteer from either side uh, to come up and roll a dice. I have cleaned them, so don't worry, there's no infection risk. Um, so there we are. Uh, but, uh, so I need someone from uh, this side who's going to roll the dice for me, who's going to come up? Okay. Come on, excellent. Let's give one round of applause. That's a brilliant. If you want to stand behind that table there, that's fantastic. Uh, and you can be uh, the red team. And uh, someone from this congregation, who wants to come and roll the dice? Well done, Billy. Okay, excellent. Let's give Billy a round of applause. Billy, do you want to go over there? Got to keep into our bubbles, haven't we? There we are. Okay, excellent. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to roll the dice. So you're the red team and you are the yellow team. Uh, so roll the dice and see what you get. You can go first, Will. What have you got? You got two? Okay. Uh, so, did I say you were the red team? Yes. I did. Okay, so one, two, and you go up the ladder. Let's oh, give you a round of applause. Billy, no pressure. <laughs> Roll the dice. Six. Oh, let's see what we got. So, we got one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, okay. So, uh, Will. If you get four or more, you've won. What have you got? Two. You've got two. Oh, one, two. There we are. Okay, so you're just between the two snakes. You might just win. Let's go. Come on, Billy. We've got six. Okay, let's go. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, dear, you get a slippery snake. <laughs> oh, down to the bottom. So there we are. Come on, let's see if you can do it well. What have you got? Four. I mean five. We've got five and we've got a winner! Okay, so this side wins. Can we give Will a big round of applause? And can we give Billy a big round of applause as well? Billy, you look so upset then. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, so. Now I don't know about you. So, like, but I find snakes and ladders really frustrating. Doesn't anyone else find snakes and ladders really frustrating? Uh, this is a small board, but when you're playing with 100 squares, it can be really frustrating, because you think you're getting to the top, and then you sort of hit a snake, and you slide down uh, to the bottom. So Billy thought, I've got six, I'm going to get to the top. And then, of course, he hit a snake, and he slid down to the bottom. And it's so frustrating, isn't it? Sort of like because you think you're doing really well and then you slide down the snake and you hit a really low point and it's really, really frustrating. Okay. But actually, the game is full of ups and downs, isn't it? Because actually, even when you're at the bottom, the game can quickly change. You might think you're well out of the game, you've got no chance of winning, but then you hit a ladder and all of a sudden you're back up to the top again. Okay. And actually, that's a little bit what life is like, isn't it? Life is full of ups and downs. Sometimes, sort of like when we're having a really good time, we're up here, aren't we? We're thinking, yeah, life's really good. And then all of a sudden, something bad happens, and then you slide down and you hit a really low point, 
in our lives. And our lives really are full of ups and downs. It's a bit like a big game of snakes and ladders. Just hold on to that thought for a minute because this week we're continuing our series uh, Journeying Through the Psalms. And uh, this week we're looking at uh, Psalm 42. And uh, the question of actually where do we find hope, particularly uh, in the highs but also the lows of life? Where do we find hope uh, in our lives today? And we're going to hear uh, that reading now, and Vicky is going to bring us our reading. My eyes running, but masses really from distance, but not close up. <laughs> So this morning's reading can be found in the Old Testament on page 567. It's taken from Psalm 42 and beginning at verse 1. As the deer pants the streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night. One men say to me all day long, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul. How I used to go with the multitude, leading the procession to the house of God, with shouts of joy and thanksgiving among the festive throng. Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Saviour and my God. My soul is downcast within me, therefore I will remember you from the land of the Jordan, the heights of Hermon, from Mount Sinai, deep calls to deep, in the roar of your waterfalls. All the waves and breakers have swept over me. By day the Lord directs his love, at night his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? My bones suffer mortal agony as my foes taunt me, saying to me all day long, Where is your God? Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Saviour and my God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So as we study God's word together, uh, let's pray. So Lord, we do thank you for the gift of this morning, where we can meet in your presence. Speak to us now through your word. Amen. So our big question that I want us to explore uh, this morning is this question, where do we find hope? Where do we find uh, hope? Um, in particular, actually, where do we find hope when we're feeling uh, really low? Okay, when we're at the very low points of our lives, when we've slid down the snakes okay, and we feel like life has hit really rock bottom. Okay. Where do we find hope when we go through bad times and we feel like giving up? Now, to help us explore this question a little bit further, uh, we're going to watch a short clip from the film uh, Despicable Me. Uh, anyone seen that film? <laughs> so, okay. Some kids are going, oh no, not that film again. <laughs> so there we are. Um, anyway, in this clip, uh, the main character, Gru, uh, has hit a really low moment in his life. Uh, and Drew and his uh, minion friends, they've come up with this grand plan uh, and they're going to fly up uh, to the moon. But the only problem is they've run out of money uh, and Drew goes to the bank uh, and the bank refuses uh, to lend him any money. So they've got no money uh, and their mission is in tatters. Sort of, uh, and Drew sort of, uh, has given up on his hopes and dreams. He's lost all hope uh, and he says, we are doomed. But actually... He finds hope uh, in a very uh, unusual place. So let's have a look at this clip together. Mm. 
Now, I know there have been some rumors going around that the bank is no longer funding us. Well, I am here to put those rumors to rest. They are true. In terms of money, we have no money. So how will we get to the moon? The answer is clear. We won't. <laughs> we are doomed. Now would probably be a good time to look for other employment options. I know I have fired up my resume as I suggested all of you do as well. What is it? Can't you see that I'm in the middle of a pep talk? when you've got friends, eh? So, um, but in that clip, Groovy found hope, he found a new hope um, through his minion friends as they all come together, as they shared their uh, savings and their money and they gave it to Groo uh, in order that he can complete uh, his mission. And thinking about ourselves, actually there's times in our lives when actually we find hope, particularly when we're at uh, the low points in our lives, uh, through our friends, don't we? Our friends are really important in helping us when we hit those really low points in our lives. But actually, where else do we find hope uh, in our lives, particularly when we hit uh, rock bottom? So uh, just for a minute, in your uh, household groups, or, or maybe uh, with the people around you, uh, you might want to uh, share, where do you find hope? I said, where are the places you find hope? So just for a minute, just chat with the people around you. Okay, so anyone want to share? Where do you where do you find hope? Anyone want to share their answer? Yes. My uh heart. -huh. Your heart. Brilliant answer. I think was that right, Isabel? I think, yeah, you said your heart. So you find hope in your heart. So actually, it's not like you find hope in yourself. Yeah, that's a great answer. Where else do we find hope? In prayer. Yeah. I think so. Um, when we pray, we find hope. I think brilliant. Anywhere else? Friends. In our friends, yeah. So, yeah. So. New life, new growth. Sorry? You find hope in new life and new growth. And yeah, in new life, new growth, yeah. It. So we find hope there. Sort of springtime is a good time of hope, isn't it? When you see everything springing up. And I think, particularly when we're through lockdown, 
I think actually seeing the garden grow, I think, gave us all a lot of hope, particularly in those difficult days. So, yeah, that's a great answer. Yes? Reminding myself of God's promises in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that what we're in is only a small picture. Yeah. Bigger yeah. So, yeah, so God's promises give us hope. Um, sort of like help us to, to focus not on ourselves, but on to God. So, yeah, that's really important. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, Sarah would say that she finds places that she can go and relax. Okay, so yeah, so uh, places of uh, refuge, of sanctuary, uh, those are the places where you can find uh, hope just to be yourself. So, yeah. So, and I suppose you should say that hope is found in Leeds United, shouldn't we, really? So I uh, should, should mention that, but it's, uh, you know, champions. Uh, I'm surprised you didn't mention that, John. So, uh, so yeah, but. <laughs> <laughs> so, 20 years away 20 years of yeah 20 years of the wilderness but there is hope that's it. so brilliant that's it. so well as uh, we continue our journey uh, through the psalms this week we're looking at uh, psalm 42 and uh, the writer of this psalm is crying out to god from a very low point uh, in his life if you uh, listen to uh, the reading that vicky shared with us um, it was quite depressing at points, wasn't it? It was quite, oh my goodness, that's it. So, and very quickly, the writer of this psalm uh, sort of like pours out his heart. He says in verse uh, 3, My tears have been my food day and night. So he's basically saying, I'm constantly in tears. So he's in this really low point uh, in his life. Like, um, he's hit rock bottom, and he's hit, uh, sort of like he's slid down the snake. He's at the rock point point what bottom point of his life and uh, he's constantly in tears because he is feeling so low but why is the writer of this psalm feeling so low what has caused this black cloud of depression uh, in his life well firstly uh, the writer feels very distant uh, from god listen to verse 2 again he says my soul first for god for the living god where can i go and meet God. Now we don't know exactly who wrote this psalm, so we don't exactly know for certain what happened in his life. But there is an indication here that this writer, who is a Jewish man, uh, he loved to worship God in the temple at Jerusalem. And uh, the temple of Jerusalem was of course the focal point for all worship uh, for all Jewish people, whether they lived in Jerusalem or not. And even those that didn't live in Jerusalem uh, would often uh, make the effort uh, to travel to the temple in Jerusalem to worship um, sort of a, a couple of times a year, particularly at festival times. But for whatever reason, the writer of this psalm is currently unable to um, go to the temple. Uh, he's unable to encounter God and he's unable to join in with the songs of praise uh, and worship that went on uh, in the temple at Jerusalem. Perhaps he is trapped somewhere, perhaps he is prevented from going out anywhere, uh, or maybe he's very far from Jerusalem and the temple, so actually sort of like he can't make that journey uh, to travel down to the temple. But either way, because the writer is prevented from going to the temple, sort of like he is feeling really distant uh, from God who sustains him. And think about ourselves, I suppose we've had some uh, little experience of the writer of the psalm, um, because actually we've had that same experience in our own lives too. Because actually for the last four months we've been a bit unable to worship together uh, here in church like we normally do on a Sunday. Okay. Now thankfully some of us have been able to access uh, the online services and we've been worshipping together uh, online um, and, um, and doing Zoom chats which has been fantastic and we also know that wherever we are whether we're at home or, or wherever we are actually God is with us so we don't have to be in church to encounter God because God is everywhere and we can encounter him wherever we are we can encounter him in our homes when we're walking around in the park we don't have to be in church to encounter God but I do know that for many of us that there have been times when it's not been easy to share fellowship together uh, here in church uh, on a Sunday. 
And even though some of us now can come to church, and it's great, isn't it, that we can worship together uh, this morning, and we celebrate and praise God because we can get together uh, this morning. Um, actually, we still have that frustration, don't we, of not being able to sing songs, to sing hymns. It feels a bit strange, church. It doesn't feel like sort of like church should be like. It, there's a strange feeling this morning, isn't there? And I think thinking about ourselves, you know, actually we need to make sure that we don't lose sight of the fact, just like the writer of the songs, that God is with us. And that he is not distant, even when we can't come to church or we can't sing our songs and hymns of praise. So the first reason why uh, the writer is feeling so low is because he feels distant from God. But the second reason uh, that the writer feels uh, so low is because um, sort of like he has been mocked by his enemies for his faith in God. And this is where the writer laments in verse 3. He says, My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me all day long, Where is your God? You know, when we hit those very low moments in our lives, it's often at those points when doubts start to creep into our minds, don't they? And then we're led astray by the voices that we hear around us. And sometimes those doubts lead us to lose sight of reality. The truth is that God is still with the writer of the psalm. But as the writer hits this really low point in his life, and he begins to listen to the doubting voices around him, the writer struggles uh, with his doubts. The doubts grow bigger and bigger in his mind, okay, and this increases uh, the, sort of like the feeling of sadness uh, and depression that the writer is struggling with. So where does all this then uh, lead the writer of the Psalms? Well, the key phrase is actually repeated twice in Psalm 42, and it is this phrase in verse 5 and verse 11. And he says, Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why are you so disturbed within me? And so the writer is so caught up in his own grief and depression that he cannot see beyond himself or his own problems. So sort of like he's full of self-questioning. He's questioning himself. So that he can't see beyond the problems beyond himself. So that he can't see the reality around him. And he's so tied up with reflecting over and over again on the problems that he has in his life that actually so that he is on the verge of losing all hope. So then where does the writer find hope? Where does the writer uh, find hope? And then in Psalm 42, just at that very moment, when he's at the point of giving up all hope, he musters enough strength to look up to God and to put his hope in God. And that last phrase in verse 5 and 11 is really key here. He says, put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Saviour and my God. In some ways, the writer is pulling himself together. He's thinking, no, I've got to stop this vicious uh, cycle of just reflecting on myself and uh, reflecting on my own problems. I've got to look up to God. I've got to put my trust in Him. I've got to remind myself of the reality that He is with me and that there is hope and I don't need to give up. And so the writer finally breaks free from his grief and depression by looking beyond himself, beyond his own problems, and looking up uh, to God and putting his trust and hope in God alone. You can see the writer realises that he cannot change the past and he cannot immediately change his current situation. But he puts his trust in God that actually the future will be different. That one day things will be better. That one day sort of like, he will climb up the ladder again. That even though he's here at the moment, one day with God's help he will get uh, sort of like, to the top again. The writer holds on to the hope uh, that, that with God's help, and one day he will return and things will get better and he will be in a better place. So this morning we've been thinking about that question, where do we find hope? And I think really Psalm 42 gives us a very simple answer. Actually we find our hope in God alone. That's it. 
Put your hope in God, for I will praise him, my Saviour and my God. So next time you are feeling low, uh, or you're going through a difficult time, and you feel like you're sliding down uh, to the bottom, you feel like you're hitting a really low point in your life, don't fall to the temptation of getting caught up in your own grief. That's it. Don't get caught up in your own thoughts. Don't keep going over, sort of like being very introspective, sort of like and just reflecting on yourselves. Don't fix your eyes on yourself or your own problems. Fix your eyes on Him. Fix your eyes on God. Look to Him for hope and put your hope, your trust in a living God who longs to help us and care for us in our lives. You know, we're still living in difficult days where COVID-19 uh, continues to have a huge impact uh, on our lives. You know, it's a shame, isn't it, that actually um, sort of like we've not been able to go to school over these last few months. Like, uh, or, you know, we've not been able to see family and friends. And perhaps there's still things that actually we'd love to do, but we can't do. Like, uh, I'm really missing playing football at the moment. I would love to play football with my mates on a Thursday night, but actually at the moment, I'm not allowed to do that. And it's really frustrating, isn't it? But actually, even though we do go through this really low point, may we learn this week, when we do hit those low moments, to put our trust in God. And may our sure and certain hope in God give us the confidence to move forward in our lives as we continue to praise Him and worship Him. So as we fix our eyes uh, on God um, and put our hope in him this week to help us, I thought we'd try and learn this as uh, our memory verse. Okay, so we're going to try and remember it to help us stay positive and to help us put our hope and trust in God as we go through this week. So um, if we can have the last uh, slide in, because I think we're missing a bit. No, back. That's the last slide. Oh, no, no, no. Can we go back as in... There we are, brilliant. Okay, so here is our uh, verse. So let's see if we can remember it. So uh, to try and remember, we're going to say it all together and then I'm going to ask Rob to start taking bits away and see if we can remember it. Okay, are we up for the challenge? Yes. yes? Okay, so let's say it together. Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Saviour and my God. Let's just say that one more time. Put your hope in God, but I will yet praise him, my Saviour and my God. Do you reckon you've learnt it? Should we take a little bit out? Okay, right, let's say it again. So, put your hope in God, but I will yet praise him, my Saviour and my God. You're getting good at this. I'm going to ask Rob to take another bit of There we are. Okay, so. Put your hope in God, for I will get praise in my Saviour and my God. Do you reckon we can do it with both? Yes? Shall we take it all out? Okay, here we go. So, put your hope in God, for I will get praise in my Saviour and my God. So let's hold on to that verse uh, this week. Uh, and may we put our hope and trust uh, in God. Just as we move into a time of prayer now, uh, Ruth is going to lead us in our prayers. Today we're going to use the hand prayer to help guide us in our prayers. So the first part is our thumbs and our thumbs up. And that's when we think about thanking God for the good things in our lives. So you just want to spend a few moments thinking of and thanking God for the good things that have happened this week. Lord, we thank you for all the good things that happened this week, for all that we have learnt, 
for the work we've been able to do at the end of the school year for the hope that maybe a vaccine for COVID-19 is coming and for the hope of returning to some sort of normality. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And then we go to the second finger, which is our pointing finger. And we think about those who are in authority over us. We just want to spend a moment thinking about those people in your life that have some authority over you and praying for them. We pray for our world leaders and for our government, that you will give them wisdom and a spirit of cooperation in dealing with all that is difficult in our world, in dealing with COVID-19 and with all the other different frustrations that are there. We pray for our church leaders, both national and here at St Andrews, that you will fill them with your Holy Spirit, strengthen and guide them as they lead us, and be near all who lead services at St Andrews. And we pray for our local leaders, for those in Bolton Council, for our teachers, our managers, and our parents. Lord, give them wisdom. Lord, in your mercy. And then we have our third finger, which is our tallest finger. So we think about the big issues in our lives. I just want to take a few minutes to pray for those issues in your life. Lord, we pray for an end of COVID-19 and for strength and determination to go through all its twists and turns. We pray for comfort for those who are bereaved, healing for the sick, sustenance for the care workers, knowledge for those seeking vaccines and treatment, strength and guidance for those worried about their businesses, their jobs, or for those who have lost their jobs. And Lord, we pray also for those who are working with the poor and making your name known. We pray particularly today for the work of the International Aid Trust. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. And then we have our fourth finger, which is the finger that we wear our wedding ring on. So we think about our relationships. And if we just pray quietly about those in our lives right now. Lord, we offer up to you our families. Help us to be a source of strength to them and help us also to be ready to lean on them in our difficult times. Heal any difficult relationships. Bless our relationships with our friends. And we pray for our church family. Help us to grow together as a community and to be open to you to do great things. Lord, in your mercy. And finally, our little finger, and that's prayers for ourselves. Just want to spend a few moments praying for yourself. Why are you downcast, O oh my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Saviour and my God. 
Lord, help us just to keep focused on you and to keep holding on in those difficult times and bless all that is happening in our lives. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Bring our prayers uh, to a close. Let's pray uh, the Lord's Prayer together uh, on the screen. To our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us the day our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, just before we bring our uh, service to a close, we've just got a few uh, notices to share with you. Another thing that is usual to our services. See, it's just like a normal service, isn't it? Um, so, um, just to let you know about our upcoming services, so at the moment, uh, we have our 6.30 service uh, tonight, uh, we have our 10 o'clock communion service on Thursday and then we're back here again uh, for 10.45 uh, next week. Um, please don't forget to uh, book with uh, Elena, our administrator, her details are on the church website. Um, so, um, so, yeah, um, so that would be great if you could uh, book in for next week um, to uh, guarantee your space. Um, as you can see, we've got plenty of space around us, so uh, you can just turn up, but it just helps us to plan better if you can book, so uh, uh, that's uh, next week. Um, and I, as I mentioned at the beginning of our service, uh, it'd be great to share fellowship together, um, so we're not doing tea and coffee in the fellowship room after church, but uh, we are just going to have uh, the vicarage garden where it's safer, it's sunnier, um, might as well enjoy the sunshine, so if you can stay around for a few minutes, uh, and just uh, join us, uh, that would be great. Um, last week, uh, Tony shared how uh, grateful we are as a church uh, to everyone who's increased their giving to St Andrews during lockdown. That has been a real help uh, to us financially as we continue uh, to uh, support and develop our mission and ministry uh, here at St Andrews. So uh, thank you very much. You notice that we haven't sent around the collection plate today. Uh, that's because uh, obviously that's not uh, a good thing to be passing something around everyone. Uh, so we just have our collection box at the back. Uh, so if you wish to make a donation there, you can uh, do so as you exit church. But if you have changed your giving, um, then don't forget, if you are a taxpayer, we can also claim gift aid on your donation. So we can actually make your donation go a lot further. Um, so sort of like by uh, filling in the gift aid form. So uh, we actually have new gift aid forms at the back of church. So um, if you uh, have uh, increased your giving or set up a, a standing order uh, over recent months, uh, then do pick up a gift aid form uh, and then uh, post it back to us uh, and that would be really helpful. And it is because of your uh, financial support that this week we can finally replace our failing AV system. So next week, <laughs> so all being welcome, it's been installed on Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, we will have new screens that you'll be able to see. Look at what isn't that amazing? Um, so, um, so yeah, so um, that's really good, uh, and that will really enhance uh, our worship. Um, sort of like as we come into church next week. Um, we do need, just in terms of uh, volunteers, if uh, sort of like you want to help us in any way. Um, one of the things that we have to do is that we have to uh, sort of like disinfect the church sort of like after uh, the morning service so it's ready for the evening service. Um, so um, if you can help to be on a rotor, um, sort of like maybe we'll just once a month uh, cleaning all, just uh, basically wiping all the surfaces that everyone's touched, all the chairs, that door handles, um, sort of like things at the front of church. Um, if you could just spend 15, uh, 20 minutes just running around uh, a cloth and, and helping to clean the church, 
uh, after the 1045 service, then Glyn would really like to hear from you. Uh, Glyn, give us a wave, Glyn. Perfect. So, uh, so, yeah. so Glyn is um, going to be uh, our new warden when we elect um, sort of like him uh, when we have our APTA. Um, but, although I haven't heard, <laughs> it, yeah, no, there is that as well. So, um, so yeah, so if you see Glyn uh, or Eileen at the back, uh, if you can help us um, sort of like be on a cleaning roll, so that would be really helpful. Um, and also, just to mention as well, um, sort of like one of the ways, one of the reasons why we had a booking system uh, is so that we can uh, assist the government with test and trace if we do have um, sort of like a positive case of COVID-19 and we need to inform you uh, sort of like that you've been in close contact with someone. So um, we do keep your details uh, for 21 days uh, just in case we, we have got an issue and we do need to uh, sort of like inform the government. Uh, that there has been a case here. However, sort of like, if you do not want us to pass on your details to the government, that is your decision and that's your uh, prerogative. So um, if you would rather that we didn't keep a record of your attendance this morning, and if we did have a positive case, you would rather that we didn't pass on your details to test and trace, then uh, could you just again let Glyn or Eileen know quietly on the way out uh, and then we'll remove your name from the list. I hope that makes sense. And I think that is everything. So it's been great to uh, share fellowship. Hasn't it been good to be back in church again? Hasn't it? It's been really good, uh, again, to uh, worship together. Um, and uh, hopefully, as time goes on, it will get a bit easier as well. So well, let's just finish uh, with a final blessing. So Lord God, thank you that you are always with us. Thank you that you never leave us, and that wherever we are, uh, your presence uh, is with us always. And we pray that as we go through uh, the highs and lows of this week, that you would help us to put our hope and trust in you. And so the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ.